Gracie. I'm Cameron. And welcome, welcome to, to episode two of Inside, Inside the Capitol. Inside the house. It's commonly referred to as the house because it houses all our audience members. Fun fact, before the theater closed as a movie theater in 1991, it was actually separated two separate rooms and you can see the line that used to divide them. The following year of 92, Mike Dickerson, a prominent member of the board, proposed his capital idea. His idea was to purchase Capitol Theater and make it the home of Masquerade Theater. Now, for legal reasons, it took about two years for the board to sign the papers that would make it the official home of Masquerade Theater. In those two years, a significant amount of damage occurred to the theater, mainly due to water flooding. Now, because of this, a lot of extra renovation had to take place, including all new chairs. Fun fact, back in 1996, you could get your name permanently placed into one of our chairs for the price of $150. This helped cover the cost of buying 362 new seats. One of the things Capitol Theater was known for was its ornate design, like the red velvet stage curtain, the neon Capitol Theater sign, and the walls. Now, the walls have undergone a lot of changes over the years. When Masquerade Theater bought it, they had to cover up the glacier and cloud design with these curtains because of water damage. If you still pull back the curtains in some places, you can still see the remnants of the designs. Man, I bet for a small rural town that was a sight to see. It most certainly was. Oh look, it's Mr. Lester, one of our three special guests for today. Are Miss Stella and Miss Ella here? Oh, they're just out here in the lobby looking at some of the old pictures. Come on out, girls. Are you coming? I'm coming. Watch your step. <clears throat> Our special guests today are Mr. Lester, Mrs. Stella, and Miss Ella. We asked them here today to just reminisce on their days at the Capitol. Oh my, the Capitol. What a wonderful place full of memories. Mm -hmm. I could always smell that popcorn from a mile away. Mm -hmm. Oh, and when you'd walk in, the air conditioner just hit you right in the face. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Cold. Being greeted by Miss Harper, always wearing her <laughs> turban. Oh, now my mama told me she wore that turban because she'd walk to work and her hair would get all messed up. Mm -hmm. um, never show anybody <laughs> your hair messed up back then. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember when they used to show on Sunday? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Come into a show on Sunday. But on Saturday, I remember coming in, sitting down in my seat. You remember we'd always freak out because those big red curtains would open. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. The previews would begin and we'd be drawn in from the beginning. That was mm -hmm. news reels. Mm -hmm. Learned very informative stuff. Living in this yeah. small town. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. You learn oh. more geography. Mm -hmm. Yes. Half the real foot lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they'd show you the comedies. Mm -hmm. Old little rascals <laughs> always got me. <laughs> <laughs> Those serials. You'd miss a weekend and then you'd miss the entire uh -huh. thing. Same with the movies. Mm -hmm. They'd only show for a day or two. You wouldn't know what mm -hmm. happened. Seemed like everybody would come up here to spend a day at the Capitol just for the movie. Sure did. That's and afterwards, right. you go to the drugstore and uh, enjoy mm -hmm. some ice cream and soda. Mm -hmm. And we spend hours mm -hmm. at Evans. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Well, my memories were a little different from yours. I'd have to walk up the stairs and into the balcony, mm -hmm. where they'd separate you, you know, coloreds and white people. Walking up those stairs all the way to the top was magical because you could see all the lights and hear the sounds from the projector, you know. And uh, you, sometimes you go up there with your best gal and try to sneak a kiss because it was so dark. Now don't let Mr. Cox catch you. Oh, you Mr. Out. Cox, let me tell you. Like, mm -hmm. I'd come up here and I'd get so into those movies on that big screen that I would yell out at the characters. <laughs> Mr. Cox would come running with his flashlight down the aisle. <laughs> Glad you didn't get caught. I know. <laughs> 
Now, when they closed the movie theater in 1991, man, that closed a chapter of my life. It hurt my heart mm -hmm. because I didn't think they were ever going to open it back up again. Mm -hmm. But I'm so grateful, so grateful mm -hmm. Mass Gray bought it's open again now. I can enjoy those memories again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you all three for coming and reminiscing about your memories of the Capitol Theater as it used to be. Now, you guys join us next episode as we go into the pit and onto the stage. Hello, theater people. I hope you've enjoyed our first two episodes of Inside the Capitol. With the theater being closed over the past couple of months because of the pandemic, we thought this would be a great time to create some informational and fun videos about Masquerade Theater and the Capitol Theater. For today's episode, we pull a lot of information from archived editions of the UCD Daily Messenger and also from R.C. Forrester's book, Footlights and Flickers, The History of Theater in Union City. I would like to thank Tajon Fuller, Gracie Mobs, and Cameron Clark for their help with this episode. All three are theater kids, and I thought it would be great to use their talents and their love of the theater to create a special memory section of this episode. I asked them to read uh, one of the chapters out of R.C.'s books about um, people growing up in Union City and their memories of the Capitol Theater. They then read the chapters dressed up as older people and then I sat them in front of a camera as they improvised dialogue recalling facts from this book. Um, if you have not read this book, I highly recommend reading it. Even though it is over 20 years old, the information in this book about theaters in Union City up through the 1990s is very informational and a fun read. It is also full of memories of people who unfortunately are no longer with us. Um, reading this book makes me wish that I could travel back in time a little bit and just witness the busyness of Main Street in Union City from the 1920s, from the late 1920s up until the 1970s when I can remember coming to this theater. We will be announcing our reopening plans and future shows here within the next couple of months. Now you can always keep up with information on both of our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram. If you are not a social media person, we also have an email list. So if you want to be added to that list so you can be updated about shows, um, auditions, just send us an email and let us know that you would like to be added to our email list. It has been educational and fun looking through old pictures and going through old newspaper articles about the Capitol Theater and Masquerade Theater. If you happen to have any old pictures of the Capitol or from productions of various Masquerade Theater plays and would be willing to let us make copies of them, let us know. We would love to see them. See you next episode.